Well, we, uh, we've been uh, going through the Sermon on the Mount, right? And uh, this morning we get to talk about judging. And judging is one of those issues, right, that's not necessarily a fun topic. Not necessarily a fun topic. Um, how many of you are self-appointed judges? Yeah, I kind of put that out there, right? I mean, we may not think about that, but... Um, when was the last time you thought about yourself judging someone else? You know, I don't think about it very much, and just as preparation for this whole thing, I started realizing, you know, I started watching myself in the middle of the week, and I was crazy. I mean, you know, like I could count three or four times in three or four minutes. And, you know, it, it kind of came to me, you know, this passage is probably one of the most misunderstood uh, commands of Jesus. I mean, you know, what are we supposed to do when that jerk next to us, when we're driving, won't let me in the lane? And I've had my signal on for 15 seconds. I mean, doesn't he need a judge, right? Or, or, or what about when you see your best friend and their boyfriend is being way too friendly with another girl? Uh, you know, your mind just immediately wants to go, hey, what are you doing? What's going on here? You know, isn't that a place where, you know, judgment would be appropriate? Or, or what about, you know, you bought jicama, right, for this awesome salsa you're going to make, and the bagger at the grocer forgot to put it in the bag. That jerk, right? You know, I mean, can't we get good help? Right, just immediately, right, go to judgment. Well... Okay, and, and, you know, we talk about those things, right? But what about the deeper issues, the real painful issues that happen right here within our church family or right within your own family? You know, the hurts or the disappointments. Maybe even in your own marriages. And how quickly we can go to judgment there, right? So what are we supposed to do with this? I mean, you, know, you think about all those people, they're losers, they're losers, and we really can easily, you know, get back there, and we think, why can't people just stop being idiots? Why can't they stop being idiots? Or, you know, we do is we write them off, or worse, we just go on the offense, and we start stepping in their life, and we say, you need to toe the line here, right? Or, uh, I mean, if someone doesn't tell them what they're doing wrong, how are they ever going to get it? Right? That's what we think. So Jesus comes along, and he says, don't judge. What? What? How are we supposed to survive with that? What about those people that cheat on tests and still fail on them? But what about the people that cheat on tests? I had a cousin that did that. It's, kind of, it's a separate story, but uh, he actually cheated off my paper and still failed the test. It was bizarre. I was younger. It wasn't like last week, but it was, a, it was in high school. <laughs> All right. Um, well, you know, but there are people that are doing some serious stuff. What about people that are misleading churches? They just got bad, bad theology, bad teaching, false teachers. Not there. Or, or people that abuse others, right? Or people that rob or, or murderers. What about our court system? So, you know, when do you invoke this teaching of Jesus? You know, very easily misunderstood. How do we survive without judging? Well, we're gonna, that's what Jesus is going to talk about and give us a way to clearly understand it. So let's pray as we go into the, God's Word this morning. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you never leave us alone and that you've given us your word through history and you came yourself and you gave us your very words and we just treasure them, Jesus. We don't want to take them lightly. Your words are awesome. So would you speak, Lord, through me? Would you let uh, your words be my words? Uh, we ask Jesus for your glory. Amen. Amen. All right. You got your Bibles. Uh, open them up. Uh, we're going to be at Matthew 7, verses 1 through 5. It's going to be on the screen as well. Um, this is coming from the New American Standard. All right. Uh, Jesus is speaking. Here he goes. He says, Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that's in your brother's eyes, but you don't notice the log that's in your own? Or how can you say to your brother... Let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite! 
first take the log out of your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Right? But Jesus uh, had to give those words in a little bit of humor. Uh, just amazing, some of the pictures, the, uh, the mental pictures he comes up with. All right, so, so, so Jesus starts talking about, about judging. Now, just to get this out of the way, right, we've got to deal with this. Um, Jesus says don't judge. There is an entire book in the Old Testament titled Judges. So what's going on with that, right? Okay, so we want to be real clear about what we understand what Jesus is talking about. So there, in, in the book of Judges, there are 12 judges that the Lord called to lead Israel as they were uh, entering uh, and pursuing to settle uh, the promised land. Now, those judges were called by the Lord specifically to, the, to their task, and they are in a role of governance as well as judging, but they've been called specifically to do that. Um, so we want to make sure we understand what Jesus is talking about here. Uh, let me give you another example. A little later on in Matthew 19, 28, Jesus tells his disciples who said, we've left everything to follow you, Jesus. He says, in the new, in the new kingdom, you will sit on 12 thrones and you will judge the tribes of Israel. Again, that's sort of a reference to uh, governing and having a role of service in the new kingdom. Okay, there's an issue of sort of governance there. And even in John 7, 24, uh, Jesus will, will uh, take back at the Pharisees who are accusing him of healing on the Sabbath, and they'll say, and Jesus will say to them, judge righteously. He knows their job. Their job as scribes and, you know, as, as priests in the law was to be able to understand the law and to adjudicate on it. So Jesus is not saying that judgment in those places is, in, is inappropriate. What he's saying here, and he's talking very specifically, is about interpersonal relationships, okay? So that we still have a need in our society for judges. Uh, there, there, is, there, are, there are judges or governors in, in the church, uh, and there will be in heaven. Some people will be assigned that as well. But Jesus has his focus here on interpersonal relationships. Okay, so let's go into this. So, now, you gotta, we're going to know that in, um, when this is written, when this is written in Greek, uh, the Greek word for, for judge is, to judge is krino. And it means to pass judgment. To pass judgment. Okay, now, the issue has come up for us in English that we use the word judge, and we have it mean a couple of things, right? We will have it mean um, that we want to evaluate something, assess something, and then we also use it to mean to pass judgment. So if someone says to you, don't judge them, right? In our mind, what we think is, okay, I need to leave them alone. I need to not go down that path of evaluation. Maybe I just ignore them. And, and we, we understand that's what judge means. And that's where some of our problem gets into because we use this word in two ways, okay? But what Je and I want to clarify that because what Jesus is not saying is to put our reasoning our uh, evaluation on the shelf. He's not saying that. What he's saying is that uh, we don't want to pass judgment, which essentially means to come to a conclusion about someone, about someone that you're in a, an interpersonal relationship with. Okay? So that's what, that's what Jesus is saying. So I've got a slide up here that I just wanted to put up here uh, to help us. So uh, just bear with what's in the brackets. I put that in there for, for help. In your, inner, in your personal relationships, don't pass judgment so that you may not be passed judgment upon. Okay, so to give us a little bit more focus on, on, on what that is about. So, uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's that passing judgment is a final conclusion. And you think, well, okay, well, what does that really mean to pass judgment on someone? Okay, if, if you were to be able to faithfully pass judgment on someone, here, here's what you have to do. First of all, you have to know what they're called to. You have to know what they've been called to. Some of you have been called to be engineers. Some of you have been called to be mothers. Some of you have been called to be teenagers. Some of you have been called to be airline pilots. You have to know what God has called them to in order to be a faithful judge. Second, you need to know all the rules and their intent. You need to know God's 
God's law. And you need to know the intent of that law. Now, frankly, for most of us, you know, we are, there's a lot of gray areas where we'd have to look at something and say, ah, I just don't know. I could go either way. You know, in fact, Hebrews talks about uh, being so nurtured in God's word that you know the difference between right and wrong. Because there's places in our lives where we may not know what the difference between right and wrong. So we, you'd have to know all of that. Third, you would have to have gathered all the sufficient evidence from a person's life in order to be able to pass judgment on them. You would have to know everything that they've come up against in trying to fulfill their calling wherever God has called them to. You would need to know how hard they've tried or not tried, right? But oftentimes, we want to go in with just a micro judgment. You know, we catch a small glimpse of what's going on in a person's life, right? And then here's the issue, right? With all of that, we can come down to a final conclusion, and we might believe that it's a correct understanding. Now, obviously, we can't do all of this. It's just not in our power. It's not in our capability to know all of that. And so when Jesus says, don't judge, he's really doing us a favor, right? And we're going to talk about that in a second. But here's the other thing. When we judge and we come to a conclusion about someone, what we do is we justify severing a relationship with them. We basically say, you're no longer worthy of my respect. You're a loser. I'm not going to give you time. I'm going to go through the next checkout stand next time because I can't trust you. We break relationships. And that's the antithesis of what Jesus' kingdom is all about. His is about building relationships. But this judgment thing in interpersonal relationship, it breaks them. It breaks them. All right. So Jesus, so Jesus commands us to refrain from passing judgment. Now, here's the other, the other implication of that. Whenever we pass judgment, we just can't resist the temptation to take the next step, which is to pass sentence. Right? I mean, what good would it be to come to a conclusion and not do anything about it, right? And so we do that, right? In fact, uh, Luke, uh, Luke chose to write about this when he's talking about this uh, teaching of Jesus because Luke added, he said, and do not condemn and you will not be condemned, right? You can find that in Luke 6. Um, so usually what we do is we step right into it and we go, put our hands together and say, let the penalty fit the crime. Okay, boys, let's go. What's it going to be? What do you deserve? You're such a jerk. What can I come up with for you, right? And we might not even, you know, think it that clearly, but that goes on in our life. You're going to have to toe the line if you want my respect again. Can you think of someone that you've done that with? Where you just say, arm's distance, you've blown it with me. You've blown it with me. And I'm going to either get you back and punish you, or you're going to have to toe the line and do some things to do your penance to me. Right? Can you see how all that sounds? So what we can do is we can deny them forgiveness. Uh, we can uh, deny them friendship. We can say, we don't really care about them anymore. And you know what? We don't. We just ignore them. Again, you know, what's the opposite of love? It's not hate, right? It's ignorance. It's ignoring someone. It's saying, you're not even worth my thought. And that's such in the opposite of what Jesus made us to be, which is our brother and our sister's keeper, that we are that. We're called, we're created to take care of the creation. And, and the most beautiful part of the creation, frankly, is the person that's sitting right next to you, in front of you and behind you. Called to take care of that, of that creation of each other. And so we can do that. We'll even go on and we'll tell other people about what uh, someone has done. And, and we'll tell them about how we judge them and how we're going to protect ourselves and how they should protect themselves as well. Right? We can go on the, on the war path and even do that kind of thing. But here's the issue, right? All that's really, really bad. And we know we can do that. But what about when you're the target of it? Ever been the target of it? Let me tell you about a story about me when I was in high school. Yes, I was in high school once, Julie. I had, we had moved as a family back from, California, back from Arizona to California. And uh, uh, I landed there sometime in June or July. And there was a uh, pretty girl that lived up the street, and her name was Marabou. And uh, she seemed to enjoy my company, and I enjoyed hers. And we started dating. And um, 